So today we are going to start talking about parametric equations and motion. All right, parametric curves and parametric equations. It says the graph of the ordered pairs, x, y, where you get your x coordinate from this function and you get your y coordinate from this function. Basically what this says is you can get your horizontal position. Think of it this way. You've got this, let's say that there's this cliff here. And you got this car driving toward the end of this cliff. See my nice car? It has a horizontal position. The car is going this way, okay? Once it reaches this cliff, I mean, you also have forces acting on it, gravity, obviously. If, if we didn't have gravity and everything else, this car, technically, even though it's got a, a cliff here and there's nothing else to support it, if we didn't have gravity and stuff like that, that car would keep going in a horizontal position. Now, obviously, when it gets to the end of the cliff, you're going to have these vertical forces acting on it that's going to cause the car to obviously crash. So if you can kind of think of it as this function gives you the x-coordinate as a function of time. So if we put our little axis on here, okay, this would be our time axis and this would be our height. And so, again, this function would give you the horizontal position of the car if it could keep going in this direction. This function tells you the height of the car. So you have this y coordinate, obviously, is going to get lower and lower once it drives off the cliff and goes crashing to the ground. Okay, so you have these you have these two functions as, as a function of time. Not like we're used to. We're used to having y, like if it was a line. We're used to having y defined in terms of x. The only thing different here is they're defining x in terms of time, and they're defining y in terms of time. And what we're trying to do is take these two parametric equations and put them back into what we call a rectangular equation. And we call it rectangular equation because it's in terms of x and y. All right, so let's kind of look at what this stuff does. So it says, imagine that a rock is dropped from a 420 foot tower. The rock's height, y, in feet above the ground, t seconds later, ignoring air resistance, is modeled by negative 16t squared plus 420. They get this function. This negative 16t squared is, is pretty much a projectile motion function when, you know, like when you throw a rock, the rock goes up and the rock comes back down. Well, that follows a parabolic curve which is where this equation comes from. But we're not throwing the rock, we're just dropping the rock. We're sitting on top of this 420 foot tower and we're just gonna drop the rock. And so the, drop, the rock is obviously just gonna go straight down. But what you gotta realize is when this rock came up, it went like this. We're just looking at this part of, the, of that parabola. So what we have to do is we have to, and I don't have the figure on here yet, I will in a second. Um, it shows a coordinate system imposed on the scene so that the line of the rock's fall is on the vertical line x equals 2.5. So what they did is they set up some sort of axis here and they said, okay, this point is 2.5 I don't know, feet or whatever away. And so then this rock drops on this vertical line x equals 2.5. So what we do is we can figure out what is its horizontal position at time 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and what is its vertical position at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds, and then we could plot rectangular coordinates in an XY system. So for time equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on this particular equation, because it's just a vertical line, X is still going to be 2.5, no matter what we make time because in this situation, we're just dropping it and it's going vertically straight down. The height of the rock is going to be given by this function of time. So if I plug in 0, I get y equals negative 16 times 0 squared plus 420. That gives me 420, which gives me an ordered pair of 2.5 comma 420, and that's at time equals 0. 
So if I do time equal 1, y equals negative 16 times 1 squared plus 420, I get 404. So that gives me an ordered pair of 2.5 comma 404, and that's at time equals 1. So if I started plotting these points, okay, if I started plotting these points, there's 2.5, let's say right there, and let's say, I don't know, this is 420, so at, right there, this ordered pair would be 2.5, 420, and that's at time equals 0. Okay, at time equal 1, we're at 2.5 comma 404. And this is not drawn to scale, obviously, but this is at time equal 1 second. So if I keep doing this, okay, plug in 2, y equals negative 16 times 2 squared plus 420, I get 356. So that ordered pair is 2.5, 356, and that's at time equals 2 seconds. Plug in 3, negative 16 times 3 squared plus 420 is 276, so that ordered pair would be 2.5, 276, and that's at time equals 3 seconds. 4 seconds, y equals negative 16 times 4 squared plus 420 gives me 164, so I get 2.5, 164, and that's at time equals 4 seconds y equals negative 16 times 5 squared plus 420 gives me 20. So that's 2.5 comma 164, and that's at time equals 5 seconds. And if you kept going at 6 seconds, it's going to be past the ground. So somewhere between, if you did 6 seconds, you get a negative value here, which means somewhere between 5 and 6 seconds, the rock hits the ground. Okay, so now if you look at this, okay, what you would do is you would plot those points. And uh, that one should have been way up there. And then this one's a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further than down here at 20 feet. So you have these 2.5 comma 356, 2.5 comma 276. I think I got I missed one. 2.5 comma 164 and 2.5 comma 20. Oops, that's 20. All right, and this would be at time equals 2, time equals 3, time equals 4, time equals 5 seconds. Okay, so you can see what it does is it gives you an idea of where this ball or ball, where this rock is going and the time it's taking to get there. So it's, I don't know, that's what parametric equations do. Okay, so how do we do this mess on the calculator? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your mode, and you're going to switch your, your mode to parametric. So you want the PAR down here where it says, on the fourth line down where it says function, you're going to choose parametric functions. And then what happens is this screen comes up when you go to y equals. So instead of having y1, x1 and all of that, you get this x1, y1. So if I type in my x equation, which is 2.5, and my y equation, again, this would be your vertical position, this would be your horizontal position, all right? And then again, you got to be careful with your window. I set my time, time to go from 0 to 10 seconds. Um, and it stepped by 1. And then for my x, I just went from 0 to 5 because I knew my vertical line was only at 2.5, so I didn't need to go farther than that. My y, I had to go up to 500 because I knew that I have this 420 up here. Okay? So I knew I had to get higher than that. So that's what I set my window at. And when you graph it, all you get is this straight line. What you can't see is the point plotted. So I put this one up here because it did a way better job than mine picture up here. So you see uh, right here when t equals 1 or when t equals 0, y equals 420. But again that ordered pair would be 2.5 comma 420. But they're showing you as a function of time what the height is. 
at t equals 1 second, you're at a height of 404. At t equals 2 seconds, you're at 356. And you can see by the table, your x has never changed, just like we got. And there's your y's. At 0 second was your 420, then your 404, oops. Then your 404, then your 356, 276, 164, and 20. Darn it. And you can see there at 6 seconds that the height is negative 156, which means between 5 and 6 seconds it hits the ground. All right. Okay, so now let's look at some funner, more fun, funner, more fun um, parametric equations. And we're just going to look at what they look like on the graph and calculator so you can get used to how you need to type these in. So you're going to go to parametric mode and you're going to go to y equals and for the x equation you type in this and for the y equation you type in that. Now be careful when you type it. To get that cubed, we can't put the cube right there on top of the coast like they do. So we've got to do this. You've got to open up your parentheses, okay, and then cube. So type it like that. Then when you hit graph, that's the graph that I'm wanting you to get. Now that is where you have to play with the window a bit to get the picture. When you change your parameters and you change your, your windows, you get different variations of this picture because it depends on the time that you're looking at these functions going for. So what did I set up to get this picture? Well, first of all, I made sure that I was in parametric mode and that I was in radians. You can actually be in degrees, but whenever I do sine and cosine, I always put it in radians. And then my window, I went from zero for my t's, for my time, again, because I'm dealing with cosine and sine, I went from zero to two pi, and I actually counted by pi over 12s. And what I did actually is I did, once I made it to radians and parametric, um, then I just hit zoom 6 and put a standard window, which took me these to negative 10 and 10, which made this really little. So I kept the T steps the same that the standard window picked, but I changed my X and my Ys to go from negative 5 to 5. So it wasn't quite so big, and then you get this nice, pretty picture. Okay? So try this next one. Type in t plus 2 for x and 1 plus 3 over t for y. Again, be careful when you type it. Um, that's how I typed mine. And then that was the graph I got. Well, that wasn't the graph I got. When I first graphed it, I didn't change the window or anything, and I just got these two short little lines. All right, so I wanted a better picture. So I switched to degrees and parametric. And then I did, I think I did a zoom six again, which I didn't like what the picture showed me. I think it, when I did zoom six, I think it took me from zero to 360. Um, and because I put it in degrees. So for, for these ones, and again, you just kind of play until you get a better looking picture. My T's, I went from negative 5 to 5 and counted by 1's. My X, min, and max, I kept at negative 10. And then my Y's, I went from negative 5 to positive 5. And you can play with these windows and see how it affects the picture of the graph it shows. And it all has to do with how you limit your time. Okay, so play around with that a little bit and see how that picture changes when you change your t-values. It's, it's pretty interesting. All right, the third one, type that in for your x and that in for your y. And that's the graph I'm going for. If you didn't get that graph, don't panic. You probably just need to check your mode and everything else. For me, I went back to radians and parametric. And again, I tried to zoom six, and I don't think I don't think I still liked the picture. So I kept the t's what standard did, which is zero to two pi and counts by pi over twelve, I do believe. And then it went from negative ten to ten, and again I changed it to go from negative five to five. And say same with my y, went from negative five to five and counted by ones. So it cut off there at the end, but that was my y scale. And that was kind of cool looking thing. And again, play with these guys. 
the, you get really interesting parametric curves and parametric graphs when you change, you know, the degrees on your cosine or just play with it. You get some really interesting, interesting graphs. All right, so if we look at this one, these get a little more complicated to type in. Um, and, and again, it cuts me off so you can't see it. Just be real careful. Again, when you do those squares, you've got to do that parentheses, cosine, for T, parentheses, parentheses, square. That's the way you got to type it. All right, and that's the graph you should get. Um, it kind of looks like a sideways heart. That has a name, by the way, which we'll get into when we talk about um, polar coordinates. Anyways, if you didn't get that, play with your mode. I went back to radians and parametric. And my window, I went from 0 to 2 pi, counted by pi over 12s, and changed my x and y to negative 5 to 5 and counted by 1s. Okay, the next one, type it in. Again, careful how you type. That's the graph I'm looking for. All right, and then I had to play with the window a little bit to get a pretty good picture of that. So what I ended up doing was I went to radians and parametric, I went from 0 to 4 pi, and again counted by pi over 12. And then I went from negative 10 to 10 on x, and I went from negative 12 to 12 on y. And you get that spirally looking thing, which those are cool. And then the last one, if you type in, I'm looking for a uh, Oh, doesn't that look familiar? Look, that's a circle, and it's got a radius of 1. I think that's the unit circle, and oh my goodness, remember, x is cosine and y is sine. Alright, I was in radians and parametric, and I went from 0 to 2 pi, counted by pi over 12s, and I just kept my x from negative 3 to 3, and my y negative 3 to 3 because I knew this was the unit circle, and it wasn't going to go past one radius. Alright, so find the graph of the given parametric equations. Go ahead, type it in, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and you should get B. Now, notice I can actually get it in radians or in degrees. Okay, so if you set it up, you type those in, there's your x equation, there's your y equation. If I'm going to be in radians and parametric, then I went from 0 to 2 pi, counted by pi over 12s, kept my x's negative 10 to 10, my y's negative 10 to 10, and I got this picture, this little cloud looking thing. And if I was in degrees in parametric, that's fine, but you got to go from 0 to 360, and I don't know where they, again, I did a zoom 6, so they came up with that 7.5 step. And I kept my x's and y's going from negative 10 to 10. And you will get the same picture. Alright. Try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got B. Alright. And again, when you're doing this, especially multiple choice, this gives you a clue on what to set your window at. I mean, this one was going from negative 6 to 6 and negative 4 to 4 on the Y. And then I would just do a zoom 6 to get your T-step to go a standard and then change your X and Y windows to get it to match. Alright, try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got B. All right, so this one says graphing parametric equations. Now we're graphing by hand, not on the graphing calculator. And what you do is, and they, they're trying to show you if you could picture a particle moving along the path created by these two functions. And, and that's kind of what you, what you end up doing. You've got this horizontal position and you have this vertical position and but in function of time. So if I could get my rectangular coordinates, I could find the path that this particle that is going this way in the horizontal direction and this way in the vertical direction is going to follow. 
So what you do is you pick some teas. All right. Well, and, and here, this is telling you they want you to, for the given par parameter interval, so they're saying they want your t's between negative 3 and 1. Here, they want your t's between negative 2 and 3. And here, they want you to graph it for your t's between negative 3 and 3. So basically, there's my biggest range. So I'm going to have to find my time from negative 3 to 3. All right. And that's t values. Those aren't x values. Those aren't y values. Those are t values. So if I figure out my x coordinate, x will be that t I plugged in minus 2. That's 9 minus 2 gives me x equals 7. And y equals 3t. So y equals 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. So y equals negative 9. So when time is at negative 3 seconds, which doesn't make any sense, but let's go with it. When time is negative 3, we have a point at 7, negative 9. So when x is negative 2, negative 2 squared minus 2, that's 4 minus 2, so x is 2. y equals 3 times negative 2, which is 6, y equals negative 6, so that ordered pair is 2, negative 6. My next, um, when time is 1, x equals negative 1 squared minus 2, which is going to be 1 minus 2, which gives me x equals negative 1. And y equals 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So that rectangular coordinate is going to be negative 1, negative 3. Plug in 0, x equals 0 squared minus 2, which is negative 2 and y equals 3 times 0, which is 0. So that ordered pair is negative 2, 0. Plug in 1, x equals 1 squared minus 2, which is 1 minus 2, so x equals negative 1. y equals 3 times 1 is 3, so y equals 3, negative 1, 3. x equals 2 squared minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, so x equals 2 y equals 3 times 2, which is 6, y equals 6, so that ordered pair is 3, 6. And finally, x equals 3 squared minus 2, that's 9 minus 2, which is 7. And y equals 3 times 3 is 9, so that ordered pair is 7, 9. So, to graph these parametric equations in the interval that they gave me. So this one just wants the interval from negative 3 to 1. So I'm only graphing from negative 3 to 1. So I'm only graphing uh, I'm only graphing these points. So if I do 7, negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, pretend that it's down there, sorry. 7, negative 9. And then, let's see, we have 2, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we have negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 3, and then. And then we have negative 2, 0. And then we have negative 1, 3. So what happens is this particle is traveling along, again, this horizontal path, this vertical path, and that creates this path, if I could draw it, and it stops right there. So this particle at negative 3 seconds is here. This is at t equals negative 3. This is at t equals negative 2. This is at t equals negative 1, this is at t equals 0, this is at t equals 1. So this path, you can see, at negative 3 seconds, you're here. At negative 2 sec seconds, it's moved to here. At negative 1 second, it's moved to here. At 0 seconds, it's here. At 1 second, it, it mo it's moved to here. It's following this parabolic curve. 
And that's eventually what we're going to try and figure out. What is the equation of this path that this particle is following in that horizontal and vertical direction? So if we graph between negative 2 and 3, then we're doing between here and here. So if I just do negative 2, negative 6, I'm sorry, 2, negative 6. So 2, negative 6. And then negative 1, negative 3. At negative 1 second. No, we did that one. At 0 seconds, we're at negative 2, 0. At where am I? 1 second, we are at negative 1, 3. At 2 seconds, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At 3 seconds, we're at 7, 9. So this path between negative 2 and 3 does this. Okay? So you can see again, when you change the interval, how it changes the, how do I say, it changes the amount of the curve that, that, the, that the particle is going to follow. You can see now, if, if we graphed it all the way from negative 3 to positive 3, we have that negative seven, or 7, negative 9. Then we have that 2, negative 6. Seven, negative nine, two, negative six, negative one, negative three, negative two, zero, negative one, three. Um, what do we have after that? Like two, two, six. So if you go through the whole negative 3 to 3, you get the whole entire parabola. Now, what we're going to try and figure out next is what is the rectangular equation for this path that the particle would be following in these intervals. Okay. Alright, so let's look at this um, with the graphing calculator. So if I type this in for the x equation and this in for the y equation, all right, and I type this in for my parameters. So you're just, you want to keep your, I kept my x going from negative 10 to 10 and my y going from negative 10 to 10. It's the t's that you want to change. So my t min was negative 3 and my t max was 1 and I counted by 1s. And you can see just like we did, all right, it only graphs between negative 3 seconds, which was 7, negative 9, and then the 2, negative 6, and then the negative 1, negative 3, and then the negative 2, 0, and then the negative 1, 3. So it stopped right there, just like we did. Okay? You already have the equations typed in, so for B, all you have to do is change your T min to negative 2 and your T max to 3. And you should get what we got. All right, so at negative 2, you got 2, negative 6. Then negative 1, negative 3, negative 2, 0. Um, negative 1, 3, 2, 6, and 7, 9. Yeah, just like we did. And then for C, change your T min to negative 3 and your T max to positive 3. And we get the whole entire graph. Alright, so you try one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got. Hey, now of course I would like for you to do this by hand, but in a multiple choice situation, well, you're not going to do it by hand unless you had to. Again, in, in the time constraints, I would have plugged that in for x, that in for y, set my t min to negative 4, my t max to positive 4, 
and then it looks like they kept their x going from negative 10 and y and positive 10 and the y from negative 10 to positive 10. And you'll get that picture. Alright. Okay. And again, guys, yeah, you should do it by hand, but even if you were, even if I wanted to see the ordered pairs, you could still pretty much cheat and get your ordered pairs from the table once you type in the two functions. Alright, so I was alluding before how we were going to try and find the equation, alright, when we were doing that parameter and we had that x direction and the y direction, we were ending up with that parabola that looked like this. What eliminating the parameter means is instead of taking that x equation that's in, in terms of t and your y equation that has some terms of t in it, we want the equation of the path that it follows and we want it in terms of x and y, which is what we call a rectangular equation. Okay, And it's the result of eliminating the parameter t. And algebraically, it's very simple. You just solve one of your equations for t, substitute that into the other equation, simplify it, and you're done. So it says eliminate the parameter and identify the graph of the parametric curve. So what, what we're going to do is it says solve one of the equations for t. So I took my x equation. I said x equals 1 minus 2t, and I'm going to get t alone. So I'm going to minus 1, minus 1. That gives me x minus 1 equals negative 2t. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. I get t equals negative 1 half x plus one half. And now I'm going to substitute that into my second equation. So I have y equals 2 minus t, which is negative 1 half x plus 1 half. And if I distribute that negative, I get 2 plus 1 half x minus 1 half. And that gives me, if I get a common denominator, 1 half x plus minus plus yeah, 2 plus 1 half x minus 1 half is 1 half x plus 1 half plus 1.5 so if I write it in decimals that's going to be y equals 0.5 x plus 1.5 and you're done. That's what they wanted to know. Now, what I want you guys to understand is if you were doing this, if you were doing this parametrically, okay, I would go and type this in for x1 and this in for y, yes, put it in parametric. Um, I went my t step negative 5 to 5 counted by 1s, okay, and that would be the graph. If you type this in, if you go back to function mode, so my mode, go back to, put it back in function, not parametric, and type this in for y1, you see how you get the exact same picture. And you get, now your ordered pairs look a little funny, but see how you have your negative 3, 0, and there's your negative 3, 0. Um, let's see, I don't have that one on there. You got your negative one, positive one there. There's my negative one, positive one there. You got three, three. There's my three, three there. You got one, two. There's my one, two there. Okay, so you see how they go together. And again, I just wanted to show you graphically. I mean, algebraically, all right, that's all you do. Um, but I'm hoping that you, you see that these parametric equations create this path, which is this, that a particle would be following at certain times. Like at time equal 1, that particle's at 1, 1. At time equal 3, that particle's at negative 5, negative 1. Okay? Alright, so let's try this one. Again, I'm going to take my x equation, and I'm going to get t alone. So I'm going to add 2, I get x plus 2 equals t squared, square root, and 
I get t equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. So now if I substitute that into there, I get y equals 3 times my t, which I said is plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. So y equals plus or minus 3 square roots of x plus 2. That is going to be the path that this particle following in the x direction and the y direction follows. So, again, just to show, if I went to parametric mode, and I put this one in degrees, and I typed in my x equation, my y equation, and I went from negative 10 to 10 all the way around, time x and y, and I get this sideways parabola. And you can see, okay, at negative 3 seconds, the particle would be at 7, negative 9. At negative 2 seconds, we just graph this one, right? You're at 2, negative 6. At negative 1 second, you're at negative 1, negative 3. At 0 seconds, at 2, 0. At 1 second, negative 1, 3. At 2 seconds, 2, 6. And at 3 seconds, 7, 9. Okay? What, 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 what this does is finds the equation of that path. And if you went to y equals, and you typed in 3 square roots of x plus 2 and a negative, because you've got to do the plus or minus, you'll get that sideways parabola. Notice on, on my table for rectangular, all right, at negative 3, negative 4, it's all error messages. Why? Because there's no graph over here. Remember, it's undefined. Alright, okay, so you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And there you go. If you eliminate the parameter here, I mean this one, because they didn't ask for the equation, they just did the graph, you could have actually just typed this in for x, this in for y, set your, your t steps and gotten the graph, but let's do the math. So I took my first equation, x equals 3t minus 3, and I'm going to get t alone, so I'm going to add 3. I get x plus 3 equals 3t, divide by 3. I get t equals 1 third x plus 1. Now I'm going to plug that into the y, which says y equals t squared minus 2, and I brought 1 third x plus 1 squared. And this is, I mean, you could simplify that, I guess, but I would just leave it 1 third x plus 1 squared minus 2, and then if I was graphing that, again, I'd probably go to my graphing calculator. If you were going to do it in parametric, you type those in for your parametric mode, if you're in rectangular mode or function mode, you would type that in, and that would give you your parabola. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, eliminate the parameters. So this one, they don't need any graphs. They just want you to um, get the rectangular equation. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got two. So I picked this one. And to get t alone, I got to kill the root. So I'm going to square both sides. So t equals x squared. Plug it in here. So y equals 2 times t plus 5. But I found my t is x squared. So I get y equals 2x squared plus 5. There's my rectangular equation with a particle going in this x direction and this y direction. Alright, and again, you didn't have to graph, but if you look, then why is it just here? Well, again, because you have this restriction here. Remember, this would say t has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, that carries over, which says then x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Everything over here, you can see, is error messages. Okay? Alright, try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got one. 
All right, if I get t alone on the first one, add 3, add 3, I get x plus 3 equals t, and y equals t squared plus 5. So I'm going to get plug t in here, so I have y equals x plus 3 squared plus 5. And again, in my world, that's perfectly fine, but they've um, simplified it. In other words, multiplied that out. And they got x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 plus 5, which is x squared plus 6x plus 14. And if you looked at that, either way, you could either type these into the parametric mode or this into the rectangular mode. I did the parametric mode, and you get this parabola. Okay, try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 54x cubed minus 1. If I get t alone here, I'm going to multiply by 3, which gives me 3x equals t. So y equals 2t cubed minus 1. I'm bringing over 3x. That's going to be 2. When you cube 3, you get 27. When you cube x, you get x cubed minus 1. And that's going to give me 53x cubed minus 1. And if you graph that, you get this. Again, the particle that's going this way on x and this way on y is going to follow this cubic function over time. Alright, what happens when it isn't practical to solve either equation for t? In other words, if you look at this one, it says eliminate the parameter and identify the graph of the parametric curve. Um, if I were to get t alone, don't write this, but I would divide by 2, that would give me x over 2 equals cosine t. To get t alone, I would arc cosine, and I'd get t equals arc cosine of x over 2. And then you'd substitute it in, y equals 2 sine of arc cosine of x over 2. Right now, we don't have the skills or the tools to evaluate that. I mean, I guess I could plug in points and do that. But there's another way, okay? This isn't practical for us. So what we do is we're going to say, well, there's a Pythagorean identity that says cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So the trick here is to square both of these functions and add them together. So if I square this and I square this, I get x squared equals 4 cosine squared t. And if I square y, I get y squared equals 4 times sine squared t. If I add those, if I take x squared equals 4 cosine squared t, and I add y squared equals 4 sine squared t, and I add those up, I get I get x squared plus y squared equals 4 cosine squared t plus 4 sine squared t. And then I can GCF a 4 out, so I'd have x squared plus y squared equals 4 times cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Anytime you have cosine squared plus sine squared, it's one. So I have x squared plus y squared equals four. I have eliminated the parameter. There's no more t involved. I took this equation and I got it into just x and y without any t's in it. And now if you're going to graph this, guys, um, in the rectangular coordinate system, you'd have to get y alone which would be, if I subtracted x squared, I'd have y squared equals negative x squared plus 4, square root, 
I'd have y equals plus or minus the square root of negative x squared plus 4. You could type that in for, type in the positive one for x1 or y1 and the negative one for y2. Or you can go parametric and type in the 2 cosine t and the 2 sine t. And you can see you get this circle that has a radius of 2 and a center at 0, 0. If you remember about, again, what's x squared, y squared, that means your center's at 0 and your radius is the square root of the other side, so my radius would be 2. Yeah. And again, if you're graphing in parametric, I went from 0 to 2 pi and negative 5 to 5 on my x's and y. And I'll show you how to find the coordinates here in a second by hand. All right, so you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. This one's not really fair to y'all because, of course, the example one was easy where everything lined up. So if you square these and add them, you get x squared equals sine squared t, and you get y squared equals 9 times cosine squared t. If I add those, I get x squared plus y squared equals sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t. Well, the only way to get 1 over here is if that had a 9 on it. Would you believe that, again, in this coordinate system, the x, the vert horizontal position on this side has to equal the horizontal position on this side, and the vertical position on that side has to equal the vertical position on this side. Well, what I'm trying to get is this to have a 9 on it so that I could factor out the 9 and do what I did last time and have 1 over there. Well, I can do anything I want. I can make that 9 times sine squared t as long as I do it to both sides. So I can say 9x squared equals 9 times sine squared t. So now, if I put everything back together, I can say that my horizontal plus my vertical equals my horizontal plus my vertical. And now I can factor out that 9, which would give me sine squared t plus cosine squared t, which is 1, which is 9. So I have 9x squared plus y squared equals 9. And there's your equation of All right. Okay, so it says consider the parametric equations x equals 10 cosine t and y equals 6 sine t for t between 0 and 2 pi. Eliminate a it says eliminate the parameter to obtain the rectangular equation for the curve and then b plot the points and graph the curve. Well, we're going to do our little tricky trick thing here. My problem is I need to, when, okay, when I square this, and I square this, that's going to give me x squared equals 100 cosine squared t, and this is going to give me y squared equals 36 sine squared t. If I add them together, x squared equals, oh, I don't want to do that yet. I want to get cosine squared alone because, again, I'm going to run into that problem where they have different things touching them. So if I divide by 100, that gives me x squared over 100 equals cosine squared t. If I divide by 36, I get y squared over 36 equals sine squared t. Now if I add them, x squared over 100 equals cosine squared t. y squared over 36 equals sine squared t. I add them, I get x squared over 100 plus y squared over 36 equals cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which we all know is 1. So I have x squared over 100 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. I've eliminated the parameter. This 
is an ellipse. Okay, so there's eliminating the parameter. There's the equation. That's the path that the particles fall, follow. Now I have to plot the points and graph the curve. All right, well, to do that, either we have to remember all of our ellipse rules, which we haven't even talked about ellipses, so unless you remember from your geometry days, if you covered ellipses in geometry, all right? I don't even remember how to, how to graph an ellipse, okay? I know it has something to do with these two numbers and their square roots, and that's the center, and then you have to go, since it's an ellipse, one way is longer than the other. There's a lot of stuff to remember, which I don't, and I don't want to go look back up. So that's another reason parametric equations are really handy, because watch. We have our two functions, okay? So now we're doing B. We're going to plot the points and graph. We're going to find the points to plot to graph this by hand. So if I plug in 0, I get x equals 10 times cosine 0. That's going to be 10 times. If you go to 0, cosine is x, so that's 1, which is 10. If I do my y, y is going to be 6 times sine 0. Sine 0 is y, so that's going to be 6 times 0, which is 6. I mean 0. So that ordered pair is going to be 10, 0 at time equal 0. Okay? At time equal pi over 2, I'm going to have x equals 10 times cosine of pi over 2. If I go up to pi over 2, cosine is x, so that's going to be 10 times 0, which is 0. I'm just going to get my x's all done, and then know my y's. If I plug in pi, x equals 10 times cosine of pi. There's pi. Cosine is x, which is negative 10. x equals 10 cosine 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. Cosine is 0, so that's going to be 10 times 0, which is 0. And at 2 pi, x equals 10 cosine of 2 pi. At 2 pi, cosine is 1, so that's 10 times 1, which is 10. So to get my y's, I'm going to do y equals 6 times sine of pi over 2. Pi over 2, sine is 1. 6 times 1 is 6 y equals 6 times sine of pi. At pi, sine is 0, so that's 6 times 0, which is 0. y equals 6 times sine of 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, sine is negative 1, times 6 is negative 6. And at 2 pi, 6 sine of 2 pi, sine of 2 pi is y, that's 0. 6 times 0 is 0. So this ordered pair would be 0, 6. This ordered pair would be negative 10, 0. This ordered pair would be 0, negative 6. And this would be 10, 0. So if I plot those, 10, 0, 0, 6, negative 10, 0, 0, negative 6, and then back to 10, 0, there's my ellipse, which looks like a football. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. All right, so on this one, it says eliminate the parameter and graph the parametric curve. All right, so I need my t. And again, we're talking cosine and sine, so I'm going to do 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And I have my x equals 5 cosine t. And my y equals 2 sine t. And then I'll have my x, y ordered pairs so that I can plot. So if I do 0, I have x equals 5 times cosine of 0, which is 5 times 1, which is 5. My y, oh, I'll do all my x's. So x equals 5 cosine of pi over 2, which is 5 times 0, which is 0. x equals 5 times cosine of pi, which is 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. x equals 5 
cosine of 3 pi over 2 gives me 5 times 0, which is 0. And x equals 5 cosine 2 pi, which is 5 times 1, which is 5. To do my y's, y equals 2 times sine 0, which equals 2 times 0, which is 0. y equals 2 sine times pi over 2, is 2 times 1, which is 2. y equals 2 sine of pi, is 2 times 0, which is 0. And y equals 2 times sine of 3 pi over 2, is 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. And y equals 2 sine of 2 pi, which is 2 times 0, which is 0. So those ordered pairs are 5, 0, 0, 2, negative 5, 0, 0, negative 2, and 5, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 0, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, 0, 0, negative 2. There's my list. Actually, no, 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 no. I did not pay attention. They just want from 0 to pi. So they do not want those last two points. So they want 5, 0, 0, 2, and negative 5, 0. They just want half the ellipse. Pay attention to your restrictions. See how I just forgot it? Oops. Sorry. Okay. Alright, you try one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got B. Alright, so if we set up our T, our X, our cosine T, our Y, We only need to go from 0 to pi, so I'm going to 0, pi over 2, and pi. At 0, we have x equals 4 cosine 0, I'm putting a theta there, which is 4 times 1, which is 4. y equals 3 times sine 0, which is 3 times 0, which is 0, so that ordered pair is 4, 0. At pi over 2, x equals 4 cosine pi over 2, which is 4 times 0, which is 0. y equals 3 sine pi over 2, which is 3 times 1, which is 3. So that ordered pair is 0, 3. And then at pi, we have x equals 4 times cosine pi, which is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And y equals 3 times sine pi, which is 3 times 0, which is 0. So that's negative 4, 0. And there's half my ellipse, because it didn't go around. Alright, so how do you use parametric equations to find the points on an equation? You substitute t in x equation for x coordinate, and you sub t in y equation for the y coordinate. Two, how do you write the equation of a curve defined parametrically? equation for t two sub and other three simplify three how do you find the points on a parametrically defined curve same as one I'm not really sure why they're repeating themselves all right, so now we are at homework, which means we are done. So happy homeworking, and I will see you next